Thank you much, Shox. Well, Faker missed hearing some English. We are here for the English broadcast. Faker, tune in. We'll give yeah. you props when you do well in the games. <laughs> Meanwhile, the world champions Invictus Gaming are looking unstoppable so far. They have come off the fastest win ever at a Riot International Tournament against the likes of SKT, no less. This lineup on your screen is the best team in the world. And honestly, when they come in as the tournament favorites, the defending world champions, they don't drop a game here, and then they set a world record. People already asking, is this going to be the 10-0 look from IG? Does, does anyone even have a chance to take a single game? Even though people are pointing to, yeah, there's volatility in their game. Maybe they drop one. It hasn't come close. I mean, the reality is right now, there's a big debate between is IG simply playing with their food or does IG look sloppy? And the thing is, there's arguments for both sides. When you look at Worlds last year, they dropped two games to Fnatic and then they made the run all the way to the Worlds. World Finals looking extremely convincing. So you always have to be afraid of what's still left in the IG tank. And to me, the scariest thing about yesterday's game, their 16 minute victory over SK Telecom, wasn't even how quick it was. It was that the stars of that game were the jungler and the bottom lane. Yep. That is not what people are used to praising about Invictus Gaming. It's the solo laners, the absolute peak players, the shy and rookie gods of their positions. But it was Ning and Jackie Love on display with some very interesting picks with the Camille and Draven coming out. So I'm always very excited to see what this team will draft. Absolutely. They are incredibly impressive and the band's almost done here. We can talk a little bit about Flash Holes here, of course. This is the, the big story is the rebuilding year when two of their star players went over to the LPL this year, and it's okay. What can Flash Wolves do? As an org, they had never missed the semifinals of MSI. Right now, they are on the outside looking in. They do need to play a bit better. IG would be a great starting point. A win would be phenomenal. So Even a tune-up <laughs> would be great. And we have to remember that Flash Wolves had a fantastic game yesterday when they played up against G2. If it wasn't for a Baron steal, mm. it could have been the game going in favor of the Flash Wolves. So it feels like that they are gradually ramping up throughout the tournament. I think Rather is getting better and better. And now when we look at the draft, things like the Rise and the Akali are both left open. And it looks like Flash Wolves are saying, we're going to take the Akali. Yeah, with the Silas band out here, no surprise, IG immediately will take the leftover Rise for themselves. Such a potent power pick for this squad. Definitely threatening in both lanes, top or mid. And they also get one of the premier supports. Galio in the bottom side with Tom Kench already banned off the table provides so much playmaking. I would also really love to see a Nautilus come out from the side of Flash Wolves. We've seen multiple teams pick it up as an answer to the Galio, and the, uh, if they leave it, go through the first half of the draft, it's just going to get banned away, and you couldn't end up in a situation like Team Liquid were where you're limited in terms of support options, and the Galio can then look to make a lot of aggressive plays. Now Braum locked in here, certainly some aggression, some melee aggression here for the Flash Wolves side with the Akali and Sin Zhao paired up together. And that's still a hover right now on this Kai'Sa, but we'll see what Invictus Gaming want to do with their last pick, and that's now locked in. Yeah, I mean, again, the Xin Sao, I personally am just not on the bandwagon here for the Xin Sao pick, especially into something like Galio. Uh, it does make it kind of hard for a champion when Xin Sao basically has one direction going in with the team fight, and Galio is a really good answer, but we'll see if he can make use of the pros of this champion. Xin Sao still in the early game, can go for the aggressive looks. We'll see if they can make it work. Their tandem, uh, you know, pairing this with the Braum pickup, that does give you possibilities on the bottom side. Meanwhile, I'm really excited to see Jackalov back on his Fable champion. Kaiser. <laughs> this is the champion that he chose for his world skin. This is the champion that I don't think so far at this championship he's actually, uh, MSI rather, he's played yet. He's been playing a lot of Varus, uh, and I believe he's played a bit of, uh, well, Draven. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, he's definitely so played uh, Draven. Uh, only 16 <laughs> minutes, though, so I don't know if we count that as Le a whole. Least played champion by far uh, at MSI, absolutely. But the bands come through, and it's two more marks and bands from the IG side, saying, okay, Callista and Varus, the most able to punish this Kaisa. I can Ow. scale up, no problem problem. There's the Ken locked in right away to make sure they have their top laner for an early aggressive matchup. Both these should be good into Akali. I'm actually very surprised though that they went for the Kennen so early. Uh, this to me suggests that they are expecting the Akali to go into the top lane or whatever the Flash Wolves decide to play in top. Um, the Kennen will be a good answer because remember that they had the ability to save their top lane pick for the end. Right now they're just saving their jungle pick for that final pick. But they did already know that of course Hanabi's most played top laner is Akali and there aren't any across the year for Rather. He is a mage player through and through. Vladimir, Lissandra, Oriana, these kinds of picks. So that's locked in there and now they need just a final uh, 
uh, bot lane marksman pick or even a bot lane mage potentially for Betty, though doesn't play them really. And I think that comfort is really important to focus on. That Orianna, you talk about him just picking up, was the champion that rather created the big play versus G2 to give him opening in that game, flashing in on perks, trying to punish perks for his over aggression, opened up a possibility where Flash Ooh. Wolves would be able to take that game. And now, with the Ezreal lock-in, they're also going to have that flexibility on the bottom side. And a Kane. We get to see Ning's Kane undefeated in the spring split. He always plays the Ross version. Unfortunately, no Shadow Assassin typically comes out from him. <laughs> I know, Kobe. I, I know. know about the bug. There's a chance. <laughs> Recent changes, though. <laughs> I know. I make know. the Shadow Assassin quite a bit more alluring. And if you look at the enemy team, they are all quite squishy. Well, th this explains why they were saving it for the final pick. They wanted to make sure that it was makes the most sense, because remember, in the early game, Kane can be punished, especially against a champion like Xin Zhao. Now, especially, uh, we'll get a determining answer if you're playing with your food. Uh, one of the indicators could be a Shadow Assassin Kane <laughs> if he actually decides to go blue form. There are plenty of ranged champions. Yeah, blue form Kane. What's great is there is that synergy with the Galio where you get inside your opponent, Galio comes on top, and you're like, all right, I'm ready to come out as soon as they're all stunned, and then bah, you go for the fight. The reason we're hyping up, by the way, if you haven't looked at the patch notes recently, the Shadow Assassin uh, E cooldown was taken down to eight seconds once yep. you transform. Yeah, strong stuff here. So Invictus Gaming looking by far like the best team in the world, the best performing team in this tournament. That is unquestionable. And Flash Rolls, a slow start here, but they finally got that first win picked up. They do have a chance to start turning the things around. It's the end of the first round, Robin, for these squads. And Flash Rolls need to make it into the top four on the outside looking in. Invictus Gaming, their opponents for this one. We are on to Summoner's Rift. Invictus Gaming looking at a 5-0 start. 5-0's happened before. SKT did that, but there's never been a 10-0 at MSI. Ever since the round robins, there has not been an undefeated group stage team. IG on the road for that one. Oh, baby freak! Flash Wolves finding themselves a fight against the Shy, who jumped right into Eat it. some of his own demise. But is there more CC? The first hit, and they get it! Even with his own flash, first blood to Boogie. I love the timing at the end, too, because if you're able to get the auto uh, auto attack started, then even with the flash away, it is going to complete unless your enemy flashes into Fog of War. So then it's all about the timing there, and they get both the kill and the flash out of the shy. The only thing here to be said for IG is that it was two flashes for one, but that is very little uh, yeah. to say for yourselves after First Blood's been given and over. And to be fair, do you really have to be afraid of a level two Kane early on? I think that once the Akali gets that Shroud, it's gonna be very difficult to gank. So I think the fact that Bui can start with a Longsword early on, definitely a great early game advantage that can set Flash Walls up for success. My favorite part of that is that the Shies rushes over there headlong, ease right into the bush, so then he doesn't even have that option to try and get out. <laughs> and Flash Wolves on the board here versus the defending world champion. I'm a little bit sad to say, but the first indicator for me that Ning will not be changing his ways and will not be going <laughs> Shadow Game's is that a it's, a, it's a conqueror uh, for the Kane, so that's most definitely Ross. Uh, if yeah. you're going blue form, then you want the burst damage of something like Electrocute. Uh, Ross, though, the reason why it's so much better for pro play, obviously the CC and taking this with healing, but here's another look. At the Shy. Shy's point of view. Might he's a oh, yeah, he's on him. He's like, okay, I'm <laughs> oh, crap, that's Sin Zhao. God damn Ooh. it, Shy. Well, I, he was going to get Klepto. This props. is why people think that IG are playing with their food, because what? of plays like this. I mean, it was so overconfident to kind of make that aggressive move with no vision on the enemy. I though. love it, though, because it encapsulates the idea that this team is always looking for the kill. They said they're not afraid to go for the kills. They're also not afraid to die for them. How's he going to get a kill with an E at level <laughs> no, one coming? He's going for free Klepto proc. He's going in the 1v1 Akali, auto attack him twice, get okay, two packs okay. of gold, grab a long sword, win the lane. Then you kill him. Then you kill him. <laughs> All right, you guys definitely looking at the bright side yeah. of all the, the Shy's plays. I you like gotta it. be optimistic. <laughs> all right, I know like Britain's gray all the time, and you're constantly pessimistic <laughs> about the likelihood of things going well. But over here in America, we believe in doing things well. Yeah, much like Freaks League of Legends screen, very gray. <laughs>
<laughs> That's a fact. Well, so far in this early game, Flash Wars can be pretty happy. They've got advantages in top and mid, and while they are very small, it's nice to see rather having this pressure up against Rookie. I feel like the Orianna is one of those matchups that can apply a lot of harassment and actually do very well into the Rise matchup, and uh, rather really the only person bringing out the Orianna in this tournament. Completely agree. Plus, you know, he's already performed really well on it. The only thing he's really going to have to worry about is the, you know, passerby ganks from Kane. Ryze can set up ganks very well. You have to worry about the rune prison. So they're going to want some vision around him to help him out. But topside has been the name of the game. Boogie found some money up there early on. So he's yep. looking to return and see if the Shy goes aggressive once again. Well, depending how this plays, we have seen the Shy using his E a fair bit for harassment and getting Kleptoprox ready. So that's the cooldown back down again. A lot of this, too, is just waiting around for a counter gank. Yeah. They, they know that uh, they don't want to let the Shy get behind like that, and there's a possibility that Ning would make an appearance. And you can definitely turn that 2v2 heavily in your favor, even with no flashes. And you can see Ning making that read as well, as the lane is finally pushing back now. It's crashed into the turret. It should be going back towards the Flash Wolf's side. And so there's the ward. There's Ning waiting around, but the Shy. Yeah, this is going to be a two on two. Now the question is, how is it going to go? The E Ford comes in. They're going to find the potential st uh, stun now on Hanabi. Again, it is no flash on either, on uh, pretty much anyone but Ning, but looks like it's actually Flash was forced away on this one. And this could be some good damage. Has the red spike. Good damage towards the Shy down 100 HP. That's the knockout. That's the first kill in towards Akali. Now it's Ning forced to flash away. And again, Flash Wolves winning the top lane fights. And again, you can see the moment where they decide, hey, we can win this 2v2. Yes. Akali just used the Shroud. Akali just used their E. Uh, let's go for it, uh, but they're going right in to the Jin Sao. I wasn't on the bandwagon in Chef Select. <laughs> I'm all aboard! <laughs> Flash Wolves continue This down for life! <laughs> so this play, uh, initially the mo it's Kane who appears first, so Boogie immediately comes out and he's like, right, well Shire's just used his E, so now we can look for the two versus two, but as you say, Kobe, the Shroud is down, Hanabi's got a lot of abilities on cooldown, but Ken in this early on, very, very squishy, you can look to get the collapse, and immediately Flash Wolves pick their target and shut him down. That is Longsword at work. That was Boogie getting the recall off during the first blood, getting the Longsword for his clear and his first gank. Now a stun on towards Valon is really good damage here. Half HP, and Boogie is suddenly here as well. Red Spike plus a couple of Longswords. And without Flash, they're going to land the W slow into everything else, and there's that kill picked up. Two on the board. Now Rookie is coming down level five on the rise. Health bar is getting pretty low. Shall see. You can barely see out of the bottom. Nice root comes in, and Rookie with the Flash does convert, but suddenly Ning here to make sure it's all safe. That's the one for one in the bottom lane. Yep, now they're going to push in the minion wave as well. Flash Wolves sticking around, I think, with uh, the health bar here on Boogie. He should be able to stick around for Betty. They don't have to worry about another possible dive. And there's just a successful roam there from Rookie to answer one of the kills. But again, Boogie on the Shin Sao, making early moves. This is one of the players for Flash Wolves that people are looking for improvements. He's out, flashes in for more of the CC. is a good damage out of the Shy. First ult pop. You got six. Ooh, six. this is going to be the tenth. One more hit will kill him, and a solo kill. Hanabi with the Merc Treads gets off the stuns and gets the damage in. Yep, he's able to get that kill. Ping level six and use the ultimate for the victory in that fight. The Shy keeps taking those swings. <laughs> We're not done. That ends near mid. At what point do you guys stop looking at the bright side? <laughs> I mean, admittedly, they had the level advantage. Ooh, this Three on two, shockwave over the wall. Sin Zhao, are you a believer in the bandwagon? Gets knocked up, one more kill, and they find that one. Now Ning is here, but exhausted means he doesn't get much damage. And out goes Flash Wolves again, finding the one for zero. It's not so much looking at the bright side, it's thinking it's funny and loving that they <laughs> always yeah. keep taking those swings. <laughs> Flash Wolves are absolutely destroying Invictus Gaming right now, winning every single one of these skirmishes, they are on fire. Now you can understand why the Shy went for that play. He was level six, he had a level advantage over Hanabi, and his ulti can hit through the Shroud. Yep. Fortunately, he just didn't quite have enough damage to find the execute, and that one minion died, giving Hanabi the level six. Yep. Again, the presence of mind by Hanabi. He turns on the melee minion, uses a Q, able to get it, levels up do. quick, then in mid lane here, Boogie goes in onto Rookie. They finish off the burst damage under tower, flashes out just in time, and even though Ning and Baolong collapse, they have a teleport for good measure defending their teammates. Yeah, and I love the use of the exhaust that I think it came out from Rather with the unsealed spell book, uh, and it actually mitigated the potential for Ning to dive onto Boogie and then make it a one for one. But now, IG, they want to answer back. They want to help out their top laner. They have two members roaming up topside.
1,700 gold deficits, about what you pay for with those four kills coming in the way they are. That is that kind of straight up. Here we go again. Hanabi, flashless, does have the ult, but no shroud. Has to play this out. There's the R into the E backwards. Dodge the way, zero damage dealt, and clean. Clean, clean indeed. indeed. You got a couple of uh, Kane souls right there. That's about it. <laughs> so quick blue buff now picked up, and Wrath is going to feel... Rather good about this one, as he's got the small CS lead. I had to do it once. It's like, it's too obvious. It wasn't funny, but at least it was said. And that's really my motto, I think, is it wasn't funny, but at least I said it. I deal with this every day. I can steal you. I feel you. I have my own version. It's called Medic. Anyway, um, Boogie looking for another opportunity up towards the top side. You can see the pings coming out. They want to set up a dive, and Ning is actually making his way away from the top side jungle. So this is a perfect opportunity for the Flash Wolves. Yep, Flash Wolves set up for success here. Ning knows there's nothing to be had in top side but more deaths. The Shy only oh. has his ultimate to try and outplay. Well, he has ult. He finds the first stun. Here comes the dive. Boogie probably wants to pull out. Go E backwards. Now go for the play. Decent damage in. Now over the wall they go. Looking for one more shot. They get that one, but it's going to be an easy trade. And now he's got to run for his life. Finds this low. That means the ult's available. Ning through the turret. Finds some more movement speed. Lands on their auto attack. Going to get a lot of damage into this one. Mana bar very, very low. It's how to be keeps running for dear life. And now a fight in the bottom side. is going to be a trade Ooh. on the supports. Oh, it gets one. Gets answered back by Betty. Able to get the dunk punch right there just as he goes down. Bao Lan very close. In the end, top side looks like he got away. Yeah, Hanabi actually survived that. I'm wondering why Ning didn't use his ultimate. I wonder if he could just couldn't mana. quite get any rate. Oh, it could have also been mana as well. We'll get an opportunity to have a look at that in the replay, but Flash Wolves, they're not slowing down. We love seeing this. One of the uh, ways in which IG have been challenged so far in this tournament is when teams are willing to go blow for blow against them in the early game. And while we were questioning this Xin Zhao, so far it's been very proactive and Flash Rolls are resulting in a lot of kills. Zeki Love takes a turret shot here to start it out, then gets hit with the Braum Q, adding that slow, and Betty goes for it. Nice ultimates from both of them to hit Jackie Love, who tries to use his own to reposition and get out leaving Baolan there the target. And not enough DPS from Flash Wolves to finish him off before he gets the auto attack yeah. there, empowered with the passive and trades kills. And I think Betty could have committed for finding that 1v1 against Jackie Love, but because there was such a big minion wave in his face, he didn't want to run the risk. Those minions this early on into the game can add a lot of extra damage. Uh, so why not just be happy with the kill that you picked up? Like, and funnily enough, the exhaust actually could have been on uh, Baolan instead. He was the one actually able to follow through, but that's, you almost never do that. I don't really blame Xiao Xi for that, but it could have been something a bit different. Either way, you can see how different this game is for Flash was compared to their normal. They had been having a very rough group stage now, winning against the world champions. And kind of how similar this is for IG to their game versus Fong Vu Buffalo. Oh, uh, never mind. Mid lane, we oh. might have another fight. Yep. Could be similar with Ning coming over the wall. That's going to be a lot of follow up crowd control. The ult coming in by as well. Shockwave cannot come down in time. And Rookie on the board with the second. Very clean dive coming out from Invictus Gaming. Balan has been looking for a lot of roams so far in this early game. And typically, Flash Wolves are there to answer, but this time around, they were not. So they find the kill. But Boogie going in. in. True shot. Barrage finds a bit of space. Stopwatch gets a couple of seconds in. Ezreal over the wall, forcing the flash of the Balan. And then out goes the squad. No kills picked up. And with this continued fighting, check the gold again, my friends, because IG have fought their way right back into it. That's why you never stop looking for the opportunity, yep. Venius. <laughs> I mean, this is what IG do, right? They look like they're falling behind. You sit there and go, is this it? Is this finally the moment where they drop? And then they just do stuff that impresses everyone, and they suddenly have a gold lead once again. Even though they're down in kills, the gold is incredibly close. The bot lane is doing well in the two versus two. And while the Shy's at a deficit, Rookie, with that kill that he picked up, now leads up against Rob. I don't have the exact quote from the interview from yesterday, but the Invictus Gaming players talking about this a lot themselves as well, uh, you know, with the, the differences in their opponents and how they get a little bit looser in gameplay. The games get more fun when they get more opponents, I think. Something like that, yeah. And hey, this is a very fun one. We got an 11 kill game in 12 minutes. An exciting one here for IG. And uh, if this really is them choosing to toy with their food and play looser against easier opponents, I'm for it. Well, Red Kane has now just been picked up for Ning. Once he completes that Black Cleaver, that's really where he gets to the point that I find Red Kane the most difficult to deal with. The amount of sustain that he gets is pretty ridiculous. And he does very well against tanks usually, um, but even then he just naturally has a lot of sustain coming out of this game. Yeah, the, the sustain is one of the biggest parts of the advantage for Ross. The other, of course, is the big knockup that you can get 
Meanwhile, Dragon started up by Flash Wolves, and this Infernal Drake is definitely going to go a long ways towards boosting up their mid and late game. Now fighting the top side is Ning. Wants to get revenge against Hanabi from all those uh, dives from earlier on. And the Shy is here as well. Pops Zeal, pops the Flash. Really going for this one. And Hanabi able to burn both ults, burn the Flash, and get away from that fight. Trading summoner spells, trading ultimates. Another very good escape here from the top laner of Flash Wolves. Hanabi has been a guy that got a lot of the resources in the new Flash Wolves. Boogie wants to collect some of the kills that have been left behind. I'd rather behind him and no easy escape tools for the Shy. This should be possible as they try to make sure they cut off the escape tools. Shaft's coming by. Rookie now as well. Ning gets knocked by Hanabi. He does have ulti available. They're going to find almost that first kill. Cookie pops the ultimate. Here comes everyone else. Shockwave builds a bunch of space. And now Valen says, I am here. But he's in the middle of the opposing team. Slowed down. Stopwatch gives him a quarter second, and here comes the re-engage. They find another slow, they find that kill, rather, on the board of his first. Now it's the rookie who's trying to run away, gets a shield, flashes out one more skill shot, but they can't quite land it. It's IG limping away, but losing more members. This top lane has just been a pit of endless loss for the Invictus Gaming members. They keep trying to turn it around for themselves, but Look at Flash Rookie. Wolf, he's still here, Rookie's he's still here. here. <laughs> Why is he still here? He kills a minion and goes, all right, I got you. They really, really want to correct those mistakes from the top side, but they just end up making more and more errors around it. Flash Wolves doing such a good job punishing Invictus Gaming for their hubris on the top half of the map. And mad props to Hanabi. This guy, even though a lot of pressure has been thrown his way, has been finding multiple outplays, escaping Ning at least twice this game now. And look at how patient he is. He waits for the flash to come in from the shy, then he flash ults, then he uses the E, and then he uh, slowly walks it back towards the lane, knowing that, okay, I'm gonna have four members topside. Mm. Baolan reads the play as well, and he thinks if with his ultimate, maybe they can turn. Yeah, Invictus Gaming have the thought there's no man left behind. So everyone's gonna go in here, try and save them after this failed play, but it's the sunk cost fallacy, and they just end up losing even more. Balon uses the ultimate, he uses the stopwatch, he also goes down, and then Rookie just left, he has to flash away as well. It's just summoner spells, it's deaths, it's everything just falling into this pit. And now it's up to Flash Wolves to make this early lead turn into a victory. Everything for Flash Wolves in this tournament is for them to try and move on to the group stage. A win here goes so far in getting them there. And that's the biggest question for me, Kobe. Can they convert this into an actual win? Because just taking the outer towers against IG is an accomplishment, but to actually break into their base, threaten the Nexus is an entirely different challenge. You've all, we've already said it so much this game, IG will fight you at all costs. And just because you have a lead, do not think that that will slow them down. Just because the Shy is 0 and 5 doesn't mean he won't flash into your face and try and Under fuck you Under turret? Yes, that's been three times so far. Sadly, <laughs> it's why he's 0 and 5, so uh, it's not been working great, but this is IG. This is how they come back into games anyways. One of those times that fight will go correctly for them. There's 450 bonus gold in bounties available to them if those fights do go well. But right now, mid lane being sieged, Herald being summoned. This should be turret number two to Flash Wolves. And in about 100 seconds, Cloud Drake will spawn on that. If they can keep the gold lead, probably goes to them as well. All right, Rift Tail should be able to finish up this tower. Flash Wolves take down mid lane as well. Only one outer turret left, and they turn their eyes towards the bottom half of the map. Kobe, I noticed that there is a Corefield Warhammer sitting on Ning right now. Could he perhaps be going for a Duskblade? Oh, baby. <laughs> now, uh, a Duskblade is an option. Um, I actually love the Rush of Death's Dance. Yeah. Uh, ah, okay, statistically, in solo queue at least, it is the highest win rate uh, item that you can add to a Rost. Uh, he does also have the makings, of course, of a Hex Drinker, so uh, might be looking for the AP safety for himself, considering there is you know, double AP solo laners, as well as Kai'Sa, which adds, adds some sort of damage. But hopefully, for me, I would really love to see a Death Stance, because that's where you really get the kind of 1v5 uh, plays yeah. happening. <laughs> Infinite to stand on everyone, but it looks like bottom turret is going to fall without too much issue, as rather comes down. IG have two defenders. Ning can't get over the wall against that one. So the follow from Ezra has to get away from the true shot. Barrage burns flash for it. Ning barely survives. Only barely able to escape from that one. Uh, Ning still very squishy on this Khan right now. 
So he has to respect the damage output that Flash Wolves have. Fully completed Luden's Echo uh, on rather the Gunblade finish for Hanabi in the top lane as well. Flash Wolves in a very strong position as they secure the final outer tower against Invictus Gaming. And we said, yes, this is a big accomplishment against Invictus Gaming, but now the next step, being able to control the enemy jungle, starve Invictus Gaming out of those jungle resources, being able to threaten those tier twos is an entirely separate challenge. Yeah, and we've got a neutral objective spawning here. Cloud Drake up and ready for them to control. All outers have been taken. They send Betty to the top side to push it first. His teleport is actually not available. So this is this Ezreal trying to push out the wave, and they'll have to wait a second for him to get back down there. Well, we'll see if it's an opening that somehow IG can use for their own benefit, though. If there's a, you know, 7,000 gold marksman who's not part of the fight, and indeed IG walks right over there. Betty's going to be walking the long way down, and even though Ning's not here, it's IG pushing as fast as they can. Yeah, this is showing good uh, cooldown tracking here from Invictus Gaming. Knowing that the Ezreal doesn't have teleport, they see him topside push that wave, they trade, get the Cloud Drake for themselves in exchange for a minion wave pushing on topside. That is a great trade any day of the week. Looking at the vision right now for the top side of the map, notice how everything is being set up in favor of the Flash Wars. You can notice that vision slowly being crept in deeper and deeper into the enemy jungle so that they can set up around this Baron area is a really good foresight from the side of Flash Wars. Yes, it's still very early for a Baron, but gaining control over that area of the map gives a lot more freedom for uh, players like the Orianna to be able to push without the risk of getting collapsed. Upon. All right, let's play a game. This may be one of my favorite games. League of Legends? Putting yourself, yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, let's one queue, point to me. Let's queue up, freak. <laughs> All right, sure, uh, we're eligible. Honestly though, putting yourselves in the shoes of Invictus Gaming and knowing that they are looking for that comeback play, they have a lot of tools available to themselves, right? We keep talking about the Shy and his willingness to flash forward on Kennen. He does have the double spell penetration as well as proto belt built. Sure. So him plus the Galio plus Kaisa uh, as well as Kane all have the possibility here of jumping on one of these big plays. Now the biggest deterring factor that they have to deal with is what Vedius just pointed out with the minimap all of these wards and trying to get themselves into one of those flanking positions to find that initiation. My eyes would be on someone like Rookie to see if he can make a round walk play and ideally find a pick because I think in a straight up 5v5, Invictus Gaming composition, while they do have options, I'm not sure if it is the strongest in terms of setup. Perhaps that with a rise hitting front to back, it might be okay because there's not real uh, a real front line on the side of Flash Wars, but I look at Orianna, I look at the the uh, split push power and, st not split, but the separating power uh, that Zin Zhao has and the amount of poke that Betty can throw out. I feel like it will be difficult if IG just tried to force a 5v5 right now. Gotta be that Flash Cannon Ultimate. See if oh, they can find him. Jackie Low! Oh, Jackie Low getting hit, has to flash away. Barely on a true shot for Osh, knocked up by Braum. The flash over, Betty gets a kill, but he's gotta watch out. Getting jumped back on by Ning, who pops in the ulti, gets some damage, Betty does go down. One for one so far, the 4v4 begins, the shockwave finds one, Battleland is down. Another kill comes in as Ning drops as well. The Shy, willing to flash in, does find a single kill for the squad, as Shouse has to run away. But a rookie on the Akali, running for dear life. Sorry, on the rise, does go down, as Orianic finds yet another one. And it's the Shy, left alone. Zero and six could be the score. Oh! And it indeed is. Red buff takes him down. An ace for Flash Wolves. Massive team fight win for the Flash Wolves. And it all comes off the back of Betty. Finding the pick onto Jackie Love is exactly the kind of pick that Flash Wolves needed. They'll break the tier two towers and Flash Wolves extend the gold lead. Betty, the core member of Flash Wolves, still standing on Ezreal, one of his signature champions, is able to destroy. Jackie Love and Invictus Gaming once again try and collapse on their lost fight, but Flash Wolves take it home. A turret and two extra kills. It's exactly as you describe it, Kobe. Invictus Gaming is, they don't just cut their losses. It's literally just, we must protect every man, and if a man falls, we will avenge him. Oh, I mean, it, it goes to correct thought, right? They're like, that's a world champion they're about to kill. We can't let them take a world <laughs> champion down. <laughs> Defend him. He's worth more. He's worth more. Well. Uh, it's five world champions down in this one, and bring in Duke next game, maybe it'll be six. Regardless, though, it is back on the map with the gold lead. Not insurmountable, 3.2 thousand, meaningful, but in arm's reach. IG, though, have been slipping farther and farther down. Flash rolls, 
putting on great effort, and now Ning in a battle with Hanabi, but a big health lead now, and oh, this poor, poor Kane is trying to run over the wall, does get away for a bit of space, Boogie Force have learned that, but look at the Shockwave, builds a bunch of space, the Cypress to run away, they're running him down, and they're not quite going to find that kill. Now you've got Ning actually answering back, it's a one for one that he will take, and a second kill in for Jackie Love on his own skin. Ooh, and we had a miss on the W from Boogie, doesn't finish off the Shy, so it's an extra kill for Invictus Gaming actually winning the skirmish on the top side. And here we saw the sustained power that Ning on the cane does have. Even though he was in a one versus two situation, he was able to build up so much health back into his pocket, which allowed him to then dance back out and actually force flash rolls into this narrow choke point where Jackilov and Rookie could just dish out damage for free. 3,000 gold separates the squads. We can watch that fight one more time as Ning walks in Hanabi. This is, of course, not a close fight, but the rest of it gets a lot better. Yep, and then once he uses the ultimate, waits inside during the 2v2, tries to kite back up over the top. Once the teleport comes in from Rather, he shockwaves and immediately has to zone you. Yep, you can notice the positioning of Rookie and Jackalove on the outside. They're not being threatened. They're getting all of their AoE damage off without any real uh, risk to losing their life. Meanwhile, members like the Shy, 0-6, Land, the tanky frontline Galio are just soaking everything up and they're not afraid to just give up their lives because they're not worth anything anyway. Yeah, it's such a risky move there to have the Orianna teleport in on the front line. You immediately have to shockwave and use your Zonias. There's nothing left. So props to Ning for going back in, knowing that he is trading one for one here in this situation and taking down the Orianna, but that is a trade up. And this is something that Spawn always says about Ning. He's never afraid to give his life for a carry. Because I think a like, lot of people say that well, about right, Ning. It's just something that I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that I know Spawn says a lot to me. And he's like, this guy will always, always give up his life if he can trade it for an AD carry or a mid laner. And uh, we see another example of it there. And it actually results in a team fight win for Invictus Gaming. Like Ning's the kind of guy who'll give his life for Raptor Camp. That guy is. is... <laughs> All right, All freak. Right. <laughs> All right, you're you're out of your he element is, here. He I'm is gonna very have, aggressive. I'm gonna have to silence freak now. <laughs> All right, my bad, show guy. I'll, I'll put it back down a little bit. Either way, still a tight game. And the deficit now only 2.3k. Ig have rushed the way back a little bit closer. The difficulty though is double Infernal Drake for Flash Wolves and everyone but Brom scales beautifully off that buff. You can see big CS leads. 4-0, 8 Norco represent, Hanabi doing very well on the Akali, and this could be very good for Flash Wolves as they are uh, poised to kind of keep playing for that top river. Now Ning did go for the more of Malmordius, he is going more of the defensive approach. It looks like he will be working for, towards the Black Cleaver next, but he just needed that early MR against the heavy AP damage that was coming out from the side of the Flash Walls. Both the Rage Blade and the Storm Razor are also completed for Jackalove, and he's picked himself up a bit of magic resistance as well. So you can see IG heavily itemizing towards MR, and they'll slowly get tankier and tankier, and this will be harder for Flash Walls to really burst them out in a team. Meanwhile, that damage from the AD side still coming through strong for Flash Wolves. Remember how many kills were on the Jin Sao early on. And as well for Betty here, the Ezreal now with a QSS can play a bit more aggressively and get away with it. Even if he gets caught within the Kennen Ultimate, has the QSS to get out of that stun and continue to threaten enemy members. Item still stacking up. And Black Cleaver. On the way, it seems now for Ning. Adding Teleport more CDR. Use mid adding more Betty. damage. Yeah, TP's available. You've got Jackie Love and almost the Shy has that one. Had to be close to that same cooldown, but Betty's is gone. So it is until Ryther can burn his exhaust on the spellbook. Won't have that same match. So we can also see, uh, if we have a very quick look once again at the minimap, you'll notice that the bot lane is actually pushing in favor of the flash walls. They're consistently moving towards the mid lane to get priority in this lane, and they also have top pushed up as well. This allows them to gain priority around the river and set up for this Baron. The problem that they have is that they've got no front line to be able to tank the Baron. So if they commit to it, they run the risk of taking a lot of damage before the fight even starts. Meanwhile, Invictus Gaming trying to check here with all the control wards put down by Flash Wolves. He's not strangled all the vision just yet. There is, you can see that red health barred ward up at the top of the Baron pit. Hanabi on his own control ward walking away, but Rookie can knock down the vision. Shouldn't be a fight here, actually even spots him with the long range overload. It's Direct get, hit. Yeah, battleship sinking. It's gonna be okay so far. And now spots him yet again. Will this be a fight on a Rookie? Uh -uh. 
Nope. He's Press got the Banshee up. shield down. Banshee's veil down. Let's go. That is a longer cooldown than Twilight Shroud, so theoretically, advantage gained Flash Wolves. 16 to 8 now in kills. A quick tag on Ejaculate. You can stay in that, no problem, though. Has some lifesteal. My biggest concern right now for Flash Rolls is it feels like that the game is stagnating a little bit. Even though they have the lead, they feel a little hesitant to push it because of how the last fight went. And they recognize that Invictus Gaming are very good team fighters, and if they mess things up, it could result in a Baron going over to IG. So even though, uh, you know, they want to show that respect, I still want to see them, like, push their vision deeper, force Invictus Gaming into this awkward position, and actually get that team fight that you have the ability to win. Again, the biggest advantage here for Flash Wolves is the pressure that they have on Summoner's Rift. Top pushed in, bottom pushed in, vision control around Baron. They're supposed to be forcing uh, Invictus Gaming into the dangerous spot of checking into the Baron. And that's when you hit them with the Braum Ultimate, Shin Sao charging in with the Orianna Ball. Those tools need to be used to continue to force mistakes out of Invictus Gaming. Yep. You cannot sit back and beat the world champions. Gold deficit, only 1,700 now. It's actually getting closer and closer over time. IG off of a catastrophic start have more than halved the gold difference from about 10 minutes ago. And they still wait. Baron's still not taken off the table. We get to the 28th, 29th minute now. And IG poised to make this comeback happen and look for that 5-0 at the first round, Robin. Flash Wolves in the driver's seat for now, but it feels like they don't have the seatbelt on. Could be in danger here for Hanabi, but he just needs the Blast Cone to get out. The other thing I want to draw viewers' attention to is the levels between the two teams, because while Flash Wolves have just been grouping up trying to gain lane priority, Rookie's been farming the side lane. He's now level 15. Jackie Love has been picking up the farm in mid. He's now level 15. Plank. Okay, they find a slow into the shot, put him to half HP, but even lower now on the Sin Zhao, and you've got Ning here. The Flash gets him to safety redemption. He'll stand in that and stay alive here on this. That's a lot of defensive utility used there. No more Sterix gauge pop here for Boogie, as well as the Flash being burned. The Shy, meanwhile, on Cannon does have teleport, and they're using the Realm up right into the Baron. No, I'm not sure that was spotted. Now, of course, it is with the Ward inside the Pippin TPUs. They're going to burn this one down, but they will be attacked okay. just barely in time. Is the jungle going to get into range? The Flash over the wall. This fight's going to land. That's Baron for Invictus Gaming, and here comes the team fight. Slicing Mouse from over the top. They've picked up one kill already. Trade it back, though, as the Akali jumps in for a kill. Another for Jackie Love, already onto a triple. He's slaughtering Flash Wolves. He finds the Quadra, and Betty is left alone, his team in shambles. And just like that, Invictus Gaming wiped the map. Baron Buff is theirs, and they will push right down mid. Flash Wolf slowed the game down, and Invictus Gaming were using that time to build up their resources. Wait for the opportune moment. Boogie, he tried to force the flank. He forced to use his flash, and when he was out of position, the result came out from Rookie. The rushdown of the Baron. Invictus Gaming immediately swing the game heavily back into their control. Again, even with the pace of this game and the Flash Wolves picking up so many kills around the top side, I never felt that Invictus Gaming got worried. And there, they flip the switch. Rise Ultimate into the Baron. They force it down so quickly, and then winning the team fight after. Now they have the game in their hands. The Shy putting his life down for the carry. Puts on the ult, he says, I'll crowd kill everyone, I'll donate plasma, all these stacks. Go for it, Jackie Love, and he gets that transfusion, picks up four kills. And this is just an oversight from the Flash Rolls because they're pinging the red buff. They're like, oh, we can pick this one up, give it over to Betty. Uh, but what they don't realize is that the Rise ulti can be used to set up a play into the Baron. Rather does what he can to try and steal this one away, but in doing so, he puts himself in a position that allows the rest of Invictus Gaming to get the collapse. This is where we see Jackie Love just tear through the Flash members, he's got all of his core itemization needed to deal the damage to just rip through the Flash Rolls lineup. <laughs> yeah, the Shy, you know, what's one more death? 07, definitely very well worth it there. <laughs> and what's 685 damage! Yeah! That is the best 685 <laughs> damage, at least, a, at least applying the stuns to yeah. set up Jackie Love. And this is one of the terrifying things about Invictus Gaming, when you have a lead, 
it's for some reason you're the one that feels pressured into having to make a play. Whereas so many other teams, it feels like that they just slowly bleed out. And Victus Gaming are always looking for an opportunity to come back into the game. And the moment you make that small slip up, they just grab you by the arm and drag you down. Here we go. Flashwell is looking to answer. Oh, but Jackie Lefso knocked up by the problem. The really good damage comes in. They will find the shutdown. A good shot in for either. Flashing in for a bit more damage. They've got Rookie in their sights, but in comes Ning now, putting his face in the front. And now you've got a stun coming out of the shot. He's trying to build space. They will knock down Hanabi. And the rest of the squad running away, though, as indeed Ning did die. As Battleline Zolt comes in, but doesn't find a stun. This kill so far is two for one. Favor still towards Flash Wolves. That was huge for Flash Wolves. Honestly, the Baron push was coming for their inhibitor turrets. Moments away, and they choose their moment. We've been talking about Invictus Gaming still looking for their opportunities, but Flash Wolves here deserve credit. They flash in, immediately take down Jackie Love. They see the AD carry apart from the rest of the team, and they pounce. Yeah, I actually really love this play from the Flash Wolves because Invictus Gaming, they were setting up for this 1-4 uh, play where they were going to push in both top and mid lane. And Flash Wolves just saw the opportunity and went for it. A teleport flank came in from Hanabi. This kind of forced IG to split apart. And in that choke point, it was very easy to get the shutdown onto Jackie though. Ugi charging in, Shaozi flashing for it on the Braum, and they make it worth. Putting a stop to the Baron push is so big for them in extending this game. All right. We're back onto the map now with a bit more of a neutral state. At Baron Power Play, something like 4,000 though. And Invictus Gaming are now the ones leading. They grab the Inferno on the way out as well, so they've really answered those stats on top of everything else. The defending world champions looking at that 5 0 run for the first round Robin. The expected result, but definitely not the route people expected in this game. Of course, they still have to close this one out. The chance of a comeback is still here, it's just a bit slim. So keeping my eyes on the levels, notice how Rookie has just hit level 18, Jackie Love level 16, the Shy has now actually out-leveled Hanabi, even with the score line that he's gotten himself. And uh, this is a very big deal, especially later on into the game, having those extra abilities, having that extra damage, uh, and the extra stats that it provides can be very influential in these late-game fights. Yeah, you're also keeping your eyes on those 1,100 damage cues spreading through minions with the death cap completed rise. Yeah. Definitely going to leave a mark. Meanwhile, Invictus Gaming trying to push back out. Guardian Angel picked up for both Boogie on the Shin Sao, which is very strong for when he has to go in and commit fully, but also Jackie Love. This time around, he will be getting right back up in the team fight. And limited crit on the Kaisa, but has lots of armor, lots of magic as well. And as long as there's shields, which guess what? Ma and the ulti gives you. He's in a good spot. Legend Bloodline fully stacked up. He can sustain through any one of these fights. He can probably even do a pretty good job dueling against the Akali. Elder Dragon spawning in 42 seconds. Just seven behind that is the Baron. And, and a split, I think, is actually pretty equal on both sides. They both got pretty reasonable drakes to amplify. And a, a full objective trade would not surprise me. Very quick pings from the Flash Rolls are coming out onto where Ning was, meaning that they know they can get full vision control around the bottom side of the map. And they actually have priority on the Elder, but with Baron spawning relatively soon, the question is, do Flash Rolls want to take that gamble? Do they want to try and trade this Elder for uh, Baron? Maybe it's worth when you're sitting on two Infernals. Well, Invictus Gaming kind of making their choices. You can see they move out towards the Baron half of the map. Teleport used They're by Flash Wolves. They're making this trade. Remember, there is still that seven second, eight second desync right there. So this could be this Elder dying before the Baron even comes up. But keep in mind, there is no vision for IG here. This is getting burned down rapidly, and there's no answer by the LPL team. So this will be dropped down, but can they answer Baron in time? The answer is very likely no, but it will be the very simple objective trade. Are they? No, they're not going for the base race. Oh. You they? can't base race Baron. <laughs> nope. You cannot <laughs> base race Baron. Yeah. Let okay. me repeat one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Kobe, I think you could base race Baron. They're not going to. Doesn't matter. No turrets going down. They get the recalls in time. All right, Elder Dragon versus Baron buff. Let's see the show down here. A little bit of poke. Now, the actual damage output of the Flash Wolves team is higher. They've got the essentially third Infernal Drake because of the amplification, and the burn, which is decent right now. The advantage, of course, that IG have is their buff lasts longer, and their minions do more work. So even a, a holding pattern does uh, help the LPL squad, 
And we'll see if that does happen here. It also sets up for the potential second Elder Dragon wing condition, which lasts for five minutes, <laughs> has massive amplifications. And uh, if you're able to get to that point, it can really be uh, a way for you to just very easily win the game. But uh, the question is, can Flash also even stall out to get to that point? Yeah, I think if we get to that point, this is definitely going to be the longest game of MSI for sure. And Invictus Gaming with this Baron buff still continuing to keep up the pressure on the top side while they split the other two members. That's a cane on the bottom right hand of your minimap, by the way. No way that Nin can join the rest of the squad. So they are splitting, keeping Baron buff on all three lanes to try and close the map. I like using Ning as a foot pusher though, getting him to level 18 as soon as possible. That's, you know, a champion who actually can still gain XP in this game, rookie. XP, of course, goes to waste, but he can still add one last item going towards Spellbinder, I'm assuming, in the last slot. We wait to see what now comes in as True Shot Barrage with the last 40 seconds of Elder Dragon can put some damage down, but it's still just wave clear. It is still IG playing defensively, happy to wait out the Elder Dragon before that push really begins in earnest. That split push, though, working just fine. Kane in the bottom lane will kill that turret. Slow and steady is what the game has turned into. Perfect description of this game, I think. <laughs> that is, you can yeah. leave it at that. There is uh, 32 <laughs> kills, so quite a light game for Invictus Gaming. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, Flash Wars, they put up a very impressive performance. We talked about how uh, yesterday against G2, they kind of had their best game, and coming up against Invictus Gaming, it feels like that they were prepared to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe. and I feel like we saw that in the early game. They were willing to play aggressively, and given the nature of how this tournament has gone, that brings a lot of confidence to any Flash Wars fans out there. And look at the timing. Double TP used right as Elder Dragon times out. Still one minute on Baron. It feels like this is, I would expect, the time when IG actually pushes in and strives for inhibitor turrets right there. The final recalls came in. Let's see what they can get with 45 seconds to spare. All right, everybody just on the outside. What you want to do is try and sync up your minion waves, by the way, so that they crash at the same time. That's how you get the most damage out of the Baron up cannon minions. If they spread out, Oof, look at that. That's three button press, and Boogie's at half HP with Sterex drop. There's the turret gone now as well, and that means it's an open inhibitor. Still 30 seconds in the Baron buff. That inhibitor should be given away now as the autos keep coming in for the shy. Yeah, beautiful stuff from Invictus Gaming. They're utilizing what little time they have left of Baron to get as much as they possibly can. The top wave is now being built up. Chelsea could be in some danger, but they're just going to have to give up the next town. Double inhibitor dropped in that one minute window. Used perfectly. IG knew when to temper the aggression. And with that window, bam, double inhibitor gone. Easy reset. And we're just a couple minutes away from those next neutral objectives spawning. Again, you can't play PvE against the Baron buff. In the Elder Dragon versus Baron buff wars, Elder Dragon has to force the team fight while they still have their buff. That does not happen. Invictus Gaming plays very safely staying back in the minion waves, keeping the pressure on, and in the end, they are rewarded with two very safe inhibitor kills. And this will make things harder for Flash Wars to be able to contest the neutral objectives that you were just talking about, Free, They will be spawning relatively soon. You can already see the two-minute timer on that next uh, Elder Dragon, along with the two-minute timer on the Baron. This is going to be the objective that decides the game. Can Flash Wars get out of their base to even contest? So in 100 seconds, those things comes up. Second Elder would be gigantic for Flash Wars. That is a team fight winning buff. And they can maybe get the comeback out of that one. But before that even happens, Ning is going to spot Hanami. He doesn't land the Q just yet. Doesn't land the W. Gets that one as well. And it's going to be an easy walk away. All right, nice drop to the Twilight Shroud. But we still tick down till that climactic moment. And throughout the entire time, you will have these minions fl uh, flooding into the base. The, the chance at a siege. A team fight turns into a game one for IG. And indeed, now damage towards Hanabi. Woo, that one there. landed. Yeah, that was big out of Ning. All right, what can they do with this? Small chunk there. Hanabi trying to heal up in the fountain while the turret's under attack. Down to a quarter HP, and the squad is coming down. All five of IG, but they're out of minions. TP flank. This is the big play that Flash was hoping for. Looking for the wards. Now it's about to land. Doesn't get the taunt this time, but finds a knockup. He's still invisible, though. Now looking for the play towards Ning. No, jumps over the wall instead. Hanabi could not find that flank, could not get it successfully. Out he goes. Instead of clearing the minion wave as IG looked to keep the push in. Redemption gets Jackal of the full HP, and this turret might fall. How good's the wave clear? Pretty good. It's Oriana after all. A couple of bits of poke come in, and the turret will stand, but getting lower and lower. Now top lane has to be cleared. Exactly. Invictus Gaming know they don't have to force anything. The super minion's doing work for them, and now they're going to close it on the tower. The last inhibitor goes oh, down, oh. and it's just the Nexus turret. It's just the Nexus turret, and the gold leads 6,000. Invictus Gaming looking to the 5-0 start of the groove stage. And Flash Wolf now stuck inside with only two structures remaining of their base. 
the neutrals coming up in 10 seconds as well. IG could retreat. They could go for the end right now. They've got a cannon minion, but they're letting it get wave spirit. Still waiting around for the next super wave. Just dancing around, looking for the poke, looking for what that possible opportunity in would be. And Betty took the half HP, the flash in, looking for the play, shot but flashed out by Rookie. Now the engage for Braum as well. Sin Zhao buys in space, out goes IG. Look for the shy on the side, on the cannon. Looks for some stuns, can't find that just yet. The health bar's getting a bit low. Could there be an engage for flash rolls? In goes Betty, puts foul land to 200 health. Finds another Q, a nice knock up there for Ning. Jumps away, flashes out, stays alive. The health bar low on the IG side, but the entire map is theirs to play with. Exactly. Successful defense here for Flash Wolves, but Invictus Gaming don't drop a member, so they can still go get the Elder Dragon afterwards. They can oh, look still... At Wolves. Oh, Betty go for the steal. Nah, too high. Not gonna be able to get that one out. And you can see as the super minions clash into the base of uh, Flash Falls, they're kind of forced to play on the defensive. They would love to be able to challenge for this Baron, but unfortunately they cannot. So this is the crucial play where the Shockwave misses onto Rookie. Very quick flash that comes out from him. But fortunately, Flash Falls are in a position where they can just keep poking out. Love the decision making from Hanabi to force the Shy out of the fight before he can use his ultimate to really swing things in IG's favor. And then Ning making the last clutch play to just buy time for the rest of his team to escape while he then flashes at himself. So see what Flash Wolves does right here as you saw Rookie deal a million damage last fight and no one is here to stop the Baron. Triple and Hib still down to simply wave through duty for Flash Wolves. So there's the pick up there. And with Baron, IG sure must win this game. Yep, they've got both power buffs on them right now and they can head straight to the Nexus. Flash Wolves, this is their last ditch effort. They've had such a great game against Invictus Gaming so far. If they can just have one more miracle fight, one more play, that could be enough to swing the game, or at least buy them a little bit more time to find ways to turn this into a win. All flashes on the side of Invictus Gaming, save for the Shy, were used in the last skirmish. That is their only hope here. Big Shockwave, True Shot Barrage, Glacial Fissure, lots of CC and damage available, but can the team fight really happen? There's damage on a Ning, there's damage forward. Half HP, there's the burst. They don't quite get him, though he's gonna heal. So much health, the Ning is back to full. In goes the Shy, in comes Braum. There he's already gone. There's two kills picked up, and they're gonna clean house here. How to be gets a single kill before falling, and Invictus Gaming will take down Flash Wolves. Down in Kales, but up in Nexuses. Invictus Gaming once again pushed to their limit. Things looked so good for so long for the Flash Wolves, but we were talking about it. They slowed the game down too much. They weren't pushing their lead. They weren't forcing Flash Wolves, uh, Invictus Gaming rather, to make difficult decisions. And the moment that that small slip up came out from the side of the Flash Wolves, immediately Invictus Gaming punish. Yep, Invictus Gaming, you cannot live them a moment before they can recover. And they're able to do it in this game quite well. The Shy starts out 0-7. But in the end, Cannon Ultimate still provides so much utility for the team. I thought you are going, ends 1 and 8. Starts 0 7, gets one kill on the board Better. before it's all over. <laughs> Better. <laughs> Out Winning. killed by his support. Winning. Better top one. Regardless, a very interesting game, very hectic game, certainly some missteps, but great early aggression for Flash Rolls. We were wondering, could they could they play a pace that could keep up with Invictus Gaming? In fact, yes, they were the ones setting the pace, making good early plays, but it was Stopping that, it was slowing down too much that gave the way back in. IG with a great Realm Warp turned into Baron, turned into a team fight, and Control was theirs the rest of the way through it. So then to tell you more about that IG win, here's the State Farm Analyst Desk. <laughs> Thank you very much, Freak. Uh, Invictus Gaming with the comeback victory after a disastrous uh, early game there for, in particular, the Shy up in the top lane. But uh, I think it has to be acknowledged here that uh, IG... Their approach to the game uh, this time around quite different than, let's say, facing an opponent like mm. G2 uh, oh, or yeah. even SKT. What's it, the approach? It was a different approach. I want to hear what the coach is saying when he leaves the stage and goes <laughs> to the shy and he's like, 0 7. <laughs> <laughs> we got to practice the comeback a little bit. Level 1, E, and for that top. Yeah, yeah. Run, yeah. boy! <laughs> oh, no. Very interesting strategy here. Yeah. Um, it's something Break I think you have to scrim for quite a bit mm -hmm. uh, to get it down. Ooh. Is this limit testing? I don't know. It could be what argue, limits you know? was he really? This testing? is the one I criticized the most because like Nin comes in the perfect time. Like I've got you well protected. Like what are we doing? But he's We're a Kane. Right in. <laughs> Remember, Kane suck. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it, it's kind of uh, 
Raz actually tweeted this quote from Ning that I thought was, was kind of funny. And it's like, basically, you know, against the stronger teams, we really want to give it 100%. We really want to give it our all and show how strong we are. And against some of the other teams, you know, we want to have a happier game. <laughs> and, and I think that IG was having a, a little bit of a happier game. I don't there, think the uh, Shy so was, but maybe everybody else. Yeah, he was laughing yeah. on the third deck. I was looking at the camera. I was like, is he sad? Oh, no, he's laughing. Like, legitimately, there's always that faith that they'll come back. He just didn't care. Well, and that's exactly what they did. And so I think that it is, you know, to some degree, could be one of our takeaways here that, you know, for IG, if anything, this They're just so some, this cements for me how good they are in this tournament, how much of a front runner they are. Because even when things go as terribly as they do there, even when they're picking a jungle champion that's way far down the tier list, they still find the fights. They still make that one play in the mid game that flips the entire game on its head, and now they have control. And, and to be fair to Ning, he does actually play it in the LPL sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, this is one of his kind of special picks. Which so you make it it's early game, it sucks. Early game, it sucks. If you can get an early transform into, into Red Cane, then you become, you know, pretty powerful. Uh, but that being said, I, I mean, I, I do think that IG, you know, we're having a little bit of fun, but they got put very far behind. Flash rolls, I think, were playing solid, you know, up to a certain point. You know, getting the double infernal, it felt like they could take this game, and IG did have to turn it on to be able to claw their way back into it. By all accounts, this is a game Flash rolls should have won, totally. given yeah, the position yeah, yeah, yeah. they were in post 20 oh, yeah. minutes, 5K up, double infernal. Yeah, 100%. Uh, obviously, one of the things for IG is when they do decide to take it slightly more serious a bit later in the game. Even if you are ahead, you still have to out team fight some of the best players in the world. And that's obviously very difficult. And we saw IG got closer and closer and closer. And then yeah. we were just waiting for that one moment before the Rise rolled into the Baron where, uh, you know, they get some damage on, on, on the jungler. He has to Force flash away. Mm -hmm. And it's small, tiny opening. They're like, okay, let's grab the Baron. And it's things like this you can do if you are IG. And it's so frustrating, I think, for flash rolls because they're going to sit now and feel. Like they had the game, this was their way back into the tournament as well. It could have been two and three now. Oh, sorry. There, yeah, two and three. Yeah, and there are a few things. Other than the Baron, I know we'll look at it as we go straight towards it, but Flash Rolls were taking like kind of trades and fights. So taking a look at this, they find out very late, but remember you have a Kaisa in your comp uh, composition, so they are able to not only pick it up, but take the preceding fight afterwards with the cannon over. Yeah, and I mean, this is just, as Martin said, they, they poked out Boogie, they, they have him at low HP, he had to flash, they know he's either in base or going back to his jungle to heal up, and they make this split second call to go for this fight, and then, you know, rather here, instead of actually trying to take the team fight, he tried to look for a steal, it looked like, with his with his shockwave potentially, you know, trying to right. actually grab that Baron, and that just put him in such a dangerous position, your jungler <laughs> is not there, and Jackie Love just is able to completely mop up the fight. And you hate to see this kind of goal. Uh, yeah. Oh, you I hate mean, to see it. And uh, Flash Wolves will hate to see that, because as you mentioned, this was their opportunity here to it's move to, game. To, to two and three, yeah. face TL later in the day in game four, now tied in scoreline, and then maybe even make a case to challenge for fourth place and a trip to the knockout stage. I mean, maybe even further, because we might mm. be in a situation where if G2 wins their games today, IG will do the same. We have two teams who's moving pretty Just far up totally there. separated. And then Flash Rolls, SKT, and TL would have kind of been the fight for the following uh, spots. So obviously really, really sucks for Flash Rolls. They can't actually close out the game, but also shows the difference in level. I think SKT and TL are like, they were watching this game in the first 30 minutes being extremely frustrated mm -hmm. with IG because it was so clear that the Shire was just kind of like really running it down even though he didn't have a reason to. Uh, but I think in the end with them winning, it's what we expected. Some of the takeaways, like legitimate takeaways you have on this one, because before that Baron situation happened, there was that top tri-bush fight that went through that was actually a positive uh, trade for Invictus Gaming. Just because there are a lot of situations where they just legitimately are the better team fighters in the league. Uh, and so if you are SKT or Team Liquid, then you look at that and say, don't make the same mistakes Flash Rolls made in fighting into Fog of War. Mm -hmm. Because certainly, if you're seeing the Shy, who even who is so far out of the game, can still make the best of those situations. So, quick question here. What's up? It might actually be a huge question, who knows. Uh, best team fighters in the tournament, IG or SKT? IG. 100%? 100%. Agree? I would say so. I just think they're individually more talented than their opponents. And, and I think it depends what kind of team fight. If, it, if it's more like spread out and skirmishy, I almost always favor IG when they can break down team fights into these little pieces. Yeah. I do think in an established 5v5 team fight, Teddy is such an incredible team fighter. And SKT do kind of prefer to go into those scaling picks like Lecorky as well. So then that's where it kind of comes into it. But um, I mean, IG are just too good, man. Like the old LPL analysts and mindsets will look at Invictus Gaming in 2018 and 2017. They didn't have that, right? but they really mm -hmm. needed to 
become a team fighting team based off of like having to get past RNG, EDG, and JDG in the finals in the LPL. So it wasn't an easy task for them, but if they're so well talented players, like we haven't even seen, even seen like tank uh, top lane picks, but the Shy can play them out to a, a great degree as well. It's a scary thing when a team can go down that far in a game and still come back uh, to. Uh, in it to, to snag the victory and then all that while knowing that they didn't even start you know uh, from their greatest or strongest point right in that certain champions <laughs> probably could have been picked differently and even the mindset and play style could have been a bit different there's more league of legends coming up as fong buffalo and g2 esports face off next so don't go anywhere what do you think Flashwolves finding themselves a fight against the Shy, who jumped right in to eat it. some of his own demise. But is there more CC? The first hit, <laughs> and they get it! And now a fight in the bottom side is going to be a trade on the supports. Oh, oh my god, but gets answered back by Betty. Early on, the true shot for Osh, knocked up by Braum. The flash over, Betty gets a kill, but he's got to watch out. Getting jumped back on by Ning, who pops in the ult, he gets some damage, Betty does go down. That's very for Invictus Gaming, and here comes the team fight. Slicing Mills from over the top, they've picked up one kill already, trade it back though. As the Akali jumps in for a kill, uh, for Jackie Love already onto a triple. He's slaughtering Flash Wolves, he fights the Quadra. There he's already gone, there's two kills picked up, and they're going to clean house here. How to be gets a single kill before falling, and Invictus Gaming will take down Flash Wolves. Down in kills, but up in Nexuses. To change the world of gaming, you have to go beyond what's next. Break boundaries, make history, and force the universe to take notice. The world's most powerful and most upgradable gaming laptop with Intel Core processors. The Area 51M defines the future of gaming.